But hey, I'm so excited for this evening, and I've actually been away this week. I've, this weekend, I've been in Stanthorpe. Who's ever been to Stanthorpe? Just big vibes. Make sure you go there. It's the place to be, Stanthorpe. I'm convinced of it. Uh, so if you've never been, check it out. Go to, I highly recommend, the Christmas farm, okay? Now, bear with me, because the Christmas farm is the kind of thing I would read about online and say, I'm, that's on my list of places not to go, because um, it's a farm that's themed around Christmas all year round, which to me, just instantly, you start driving in, and it's like Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen and Dixon and John and whatever the other guys' names are. And, but it's incredible how you get to like feed like donkeys and goats. It's really cool. It's worth doing. Um, but I was with this church there. That's amazing. Hey, they're just like really, I guess, reaching out to their whole community. And more than just having a church, they actually have like this real presence in the town where people just know if something's up, that that's the place to run to. So I think it's really cool. And I'm excited about that. And it makes me excited, I guess, about what I want to speak about this evening. And I want to answer a bit of a question, but first I want to tell some stories. Um, if you don't know me, if you don't know me, my name is Levi. Nice to meet you. And my parents are pastors, which makes me a PK, uh, a pastor's kid. And if any other pastor's kids here, you'll know that's not an awesome title because usually it's used at inconvenient times, like uh, when you're trying to do something a bit naughty and people are like, aren't you a pastor's kid? And it's like, yeah, don't judge me because God isn't. Um, so I, I kind of, I like grew up in church. My, uh, my earliest memories, some of them are actually from church. I remember we used to be in a church in Crow's Nest. My parents were the pastors out there. And one of my earliest memories there was being in little kids church and waiting for the kids from big kids church. They used to go to like a different place to have their kids church. And maybe I was just too cool for the kids my age, but I always wanted to hang out with the older kids. And I remember just waiting at the front door of church for them to come back. I'd just like sit on the front steps and just be there like waiting for the big kids to come back. And I, I think one of the cool things about church was these kids were so accepting of me and I was so annoying. Like ask Josh Staines, I'm annoying now. Then I was on a whole nother level. He's nodding in the front row. I was on a whole other level of annoying, but they had time for me. And just all over, I guess, my childhood, just so many amazing memories of just, I mean, fun, first of all, happening in church. Whenever someone says church is boring, I'm like, you obviously didn't come to my church because um, it was anything but boring. I remember our church used to be in like a few different, meeting in a few different areas around the city, and one was at the university, and I remember uh, myself and Damo and Slater, wherever he is, we used to, like before and after church, we'd go and do parkour um, on the roofs of all the things in the university, which was really cool until we got like really amped up and we'd watch too many videos or movies or cartoons. And you know, you see a bush and you jump into the bush and in the, in the cartoon, it's like soft. Um, so we did it, but it was like a thorn bush and we just roasted ourselves really bad. So just, you know, if you ever see a bush and think that looks like I should jump in it, don't. Uh, it's not a good plan. I remember even when I guess we were meeting at our old uh, facility. I don't know if anyone, does anyone remember Moffat Street? Come along there. It was like a pretty wild old venue. Um, and the crazy thing was that, you know, um, every week, well, every day, there was possums that lived in the, in the, in the roof of church. And I remember one night on a, in a 6 p.m. service, it was getting to the altar call, you know, the serious moment of church. You know, does anyone want to believe in Jesus? And there was this noise like a rushing wind. Um, and that was actually more like a stomp and a thump. I'm like, what's going on? This possum is just like running laps up above everybody. And then just in the most beautiful moment, just as we get to the part where it's like, does anyone want to know Jesus? A roof tile fell out on the stage and the possum landed on the stage and then just like took off 100 miles an hour through the people. There was squealing and it was amazing. And uh, I feel like my life just full of stories of just fun times, hey, just really fun times. But more than that, I think I look back on my life and I see there was some really significant moments that happened in my life that shaped who I am today that happened in church or because of people from church. I mean, even looking back to things like um, I remember being in Damo's uh, life group when we were at youth and poor Damo, this, this man is a legend. I don't know how he still calls me his friend publicly anyway. Um, so we gave him a really hard time. And I remember one time the youth pastor came and pulled me out of life group because I was just acting up and, you know, causing a ruckus. And it was crazy because he didn't actually, I, I didn't actually get in trouble. He like didn't sit me down and say, 
what have you been doing that you're so naughty or whatever? He just said, you know what, Levi, I think that there's a lot of influence on your life. I think that you're going to go ahead and do big things, but you have to kind of channel how you use that influence. You're going to either have to use it for good, or you're going to end up influencing people in a negative way. And, and I remember that being like a pivotal moment in my life where I realized I don't just want to be somebody who's leading everyone astray. I actually want to be someone that leads people in um, to Jesus and leads people forward in their life. And just so many big moments like that from youth camps where I remember people like praying for me and prophesying, which is kind of just like encouraging um, about, you know, things I really believe that I do. And it's just my whole experience has been this one of just like continual growth. Just so many key moments, whether it be in worship and just feeling like God's peace. And I mean, those ones are too many to list. Or first time, I remember the first time I was kind of baptized in the Holy Spirit or filled with the Holy Spirit, being at, you know, the front of a service, not too different to this and just experiencing God in a way that I'd never experienced Him before. So my life has been completely transformed, I suppose, by God working through the church. Does anyone else have that experience? I hope that's your experience as well. We've got nodding. You can show hands as well if you want. It's just a bit more visible. Yeah, there we go. Good, good. Okay, that's great. Just uh, any, anything that you agree with, just put your hand up. I think that's what they do in some churches. Hey, have you ever seen that? They're like sitting down and the preacher like says something good and the, they just stand up and they do these ones. They don't say anything. They just kind of like put their hand up. So feel free to do that um, if you'd like to. Uh, but I hope your experience is that as well. Maybe it was encouragement. Maybe it was someone praying over you. Maybe it was just something you actually experienced during the service. And I guess the, the question I want to answer tonight is why go to church? Turn to the person beside you and go, why go to church? Now, I realize I'm preaching to the choir here tonight, okay? Because you're all at church. So I'm assuming that you have some kind of reason for why you would go to church. But I think like, through COVID especially, there's been this big shakeup where, where people are maybe looking at the world a little bit differently and asking questions not so different to this one. And, and I think one of the things I've seen in people, if I've just my take on maybe culture, especially church culture through COVID, is a lot of people who had already made a decision that I go to church every week, now the decision is every week I decide if I go to church. It's like, do I feel like it? Am I too busy? Am I too tired? And instead of it being this preset kind of thing, it becomes this weekly, will I go or won't I go? And it's not a big shift, but it's a shift that I think is significant. So I guess I want to just encourage us tonight about the power of just showing up. Are you excited about that? You ready? You you excited to be here? That's good. That's good. And it's going to be pretty casual tonight, um, which I think it always is. I think that's, that's maybe that's just me a little bit is casual, but I hope that you're encouraged. And I just really believe that wherever you are, if you'd open your heart, that God actually wants to speak something really encouraging to you. That's always our goal here at New Hope is that you would leave feeling better than you came in. You'd leave feeling empowered and encouraged and inspired to go live the next seven days, six days, uh, depending on whether or not this is the first day of the week, Matt Betts. Um, But hey, I want to read to us from Acts 2, verse 42 to 47. Um, The church I was in in Stanthorpe, everyone had a hard copy Bible, and I was like, that's cool, those things still exist. So, And everyone would literally was like flipping through their Bible like wild, it was pretty cool. Um, Anyway, this is Acts 2, this is like kind of Bible history, this is after Jesus Um, died, rose again, and this is essentially kind of the beginning of what we would now call the church, okay? Um, And this is what they said they were doing. It says, they were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostles and to fellowship and to eating meals. I want everyone to say, together, together, and to prayers. A sense of awe was felt by everyone. If I pause, you can say it with me, okay? That's what we're going to do. We're going very interactive this evening. Uh, and many signs, and many wonders and signs um, were taking place through the, asos- uh, uh, the apostles. <laughs> They're like different types of triangles. No, it's the apostles. Uh, <laughs> and all those who had believed in Jesus as Savior were together and had all things in common. So they were sharing all the things they had to meet any of the needs within the group. Uh, And they began to sell their property and their possessions and were sharing the proceeds with all, all the other believers, as anyone had need. Day after day, they met in the temple area and continued praising with one mind and breaking bread 
in various private homes. <laughs> they were eating their meals together with joy and generous hearts, praising God continually and having favor with all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily those who were being saved. I think this is a pretty awesome picture, hey, of what church is. People getting together, meeting needs together, being filled with joy, because church should be a place of joy, right? Church should be fun, I believe it, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's not something weak, it's not something to be looked down on. Just because we have fun doesn't mean we're less serious about God. It means we've realized that actually when we have joy, we're strong. It's a place of strength. When we have joy, when we can laugh, when we can clap in church, when we can say amen, brother, this, when we have our strength is when we have our joy. And so I've just got a couple of thoughts about why go to church. And, and I would just say quickly, and I, Matt, uh, Matt mentioned it earlier, um, but even the phrase go to church is a, bit, is a bit funny because church isn't a building and it's not a service. It's not an event. Church is people. We are the church. So going to church is kind of a funny thing because we are the church. It's actually the church coming to the building is what we're doing. And I love this church at Stanthorpe. When you leave through the, uh, the exit to the auditorium, there's a sign and it says, the church has left the building. And I was like, that's so cool. We might, we might do that. But it's, I think it's just such a practical reminder that this church isn't something to go to. Church is something to be a part of. It's a community of people doing life together, growing together, and meeting need together. So that's my first thought, is that community is essential for growth. So what is church? Church is a community of people. And why is community important? Community is important because it's essential for us to grow. It's, again, people doing life together through the good times and the bad times. I'm convinced that the only way to grow is when you're surrounded by people who are encouraging you and spurring you on to growth. Has anyone ever, does anyone feel like they're growing at church? I really hope that that's your experience. About five people put their hand up, so that's pretty good. That's probably like 10% of the people here feel like they're growing. That's good. We'll, we'll go for 12% next week. Um, but, but I hope you feel like you're actually growing, and, and maybe not just even growing in knowledge, but you're actually growing in your application of what you're learning. That's why we love journaling, reading the, reading the scriptures, and, and not just reading them for reading's sake, but actually applying them to your life and saying, this is good, this is maybe what God's saying to me, and this is what I'm going to do about it. So when I read about forgiveness, I'm not saying forgiveness is good, I'm saying, is there anyone in my life that I need to forgive? Because then all of the sudden, that becomes transformational, right? Uh, instead of reading and saying, I should say nice things about people, I read it and I say, is there anyone in my life that maybe I'm speaking down to and I need to change it? And all of the sudden, I can grow. And community is essential for that because sometimes we don't see our blind spots and we need someone who cares about us to say, hey, I think you might need to grow in this area. I love what it says in Colossians 2, 2-4, to and this is written to the church, an encouragement about what church should look like. And it says, my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom all are hidden, uh, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so none of you may deceive yourself, no one may, so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. Essentially what it's saying, in the context of community, that's actually how we work out our faith. It's in the context of community. So as you're encouraged in heart and united in love, you grow. You grow in your knowledge, you grow in your understanding, you grow in your application of what it actually means to live a life following Jesus in the context of community. And here's how this works, right? The, 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 the paradox of church is we're all trying to reflect Jesus, right? Is, um, most of us anyway, trying to reflect Jesus. That's what we're living as, trying to live as a reflection of Jesus. The issue is none of us here perfectly reflect Jesus, yeah? So <laughs> we're in this kind of funny thing where we're trying to reflect Jesus, but we also find ourselves as imperfect people. And what that means is that you can actually get hurt in church. You can get offended in church. Someone can do something, <clears throat> sorry, someone can do something that upsets you in church. And it's sad and it's unfortunate, but actually it's part of growing because we need that context. We need the context of community to be able to grow in our faith. 
We need opportunities in church to practice forgiveness. Because if we can't forgive someone in here, how are we going to forgive someone out there, right? If we can't get on the same page with somebody in here, how are we going to get on the same page with somebody out there? It's so, that's why it's so important that we're learning to live a life of honoring Jesus. And this is the perfect practice ground for it. I love it when it comes to um, relationships within church. I think it's really cool uh, because I guess if you're just dating someone outside of church, if things don't go well, you just never see them again. Um, although in Toowoomba, you probably will see them again. It's not that big uh, unless you like move to Dolby or something. You're probably going to see them again. Um, in church, if you guys are hanging out or dating and things don't go well, chances are you're going to see them next weekend and the weekend after, and the weekend after that. And that's why it's so important that we actually learn to live God-honoring lives in the context of community. And that we, I guess we're honorable in a sense of, I can see you next week, and it's okay. It, It might be awkward at first, but it's okay because we're learning to do life together in the context of community. I know this is a little bit of an in-house thing tonight, but I just want to encourage us. This is why it's so important to be involved in churches because growth happens in community. It's where we learn. It's where we grow. If we want to live great big lives, church is the perfect practice ground for that. And you can look at it in so many ways. I mean, as far as generosity, that's what tithing is. Tithing is just practicing generosity. It's telling yourself, I will be a generous person. That's what serving is and being a part of a team. It's saying, my time, I'm going to honor God with my time and not hoard my time and my gift to myself. I'm going to use it for the better of people. But that shouldn't stop when I walk out the door because I'm the church, right? We are the church. The church isn't a building. As I go out into the community, I can then use my gifts and my time to serve others. So let's be a place of encouragement. Um, I, I've always found that with church, hey. I've always been so encouraged. And I hope that's your experience, that you've been encouraged at church. Um, I remember just recently I started playing drums again at a few kind of church events that were happening. And people have been so encouraging. And I love it because most of them can't play drums. And they're like, you did great. And I'm like, you wouldn't know if I did bad. Unless it was really bad, and then you probably would know. Um, but I'm just, I'm so encouraged every time. And it's like when, uh, when I was in Taiwan and I'd, I'd speak Chinese and I'd have another foreigner come up to me and say, your Chinese is amazing. And I'd be like, you can't even speak Chinese. How, how do you know if my Chinese is amazing? And I, I remember like here one, one year I came back and my dad wanted me to speak some Chinese. He got me to speak some Chinese. And um, he said, speak some Chinese, which is always awkward. So I said, Niawasuosama. And he said, wow, incredible. What did you say? And I said, I said, what do you want me to say? Because <laughs> I don't know what to say. But, but it, I, I love it that, that people's heart is actually to encourage you. And it, it's not disingenuous. People just love seeing you do well. And I love that about church. And even sometimes when you're challenged and maybe not doing so well, I love that people encourage you, inspire you onto greater things. So let's make it be a place of encouragement. I think key is, if you think it, say it. If you think something encouraging about someone, don't hold that blessing back from them. Speak it out to them. Encourage them with whatever you think. If you think someone's shoes are cool, tell them you think their shoes are cool, all right? But, but hopefully it's even on a deeper level than that. When someone's doing something, we can actually encourage them um, in a powerful way. So why go to church? I mean, community is essential for growth. And, but also, church isn't just community. There's, there's so many great places that you can find good community. Hey, who's, who's a part of a community outside of church, whether it be a class, sporting club, that kind of thing? Yeah, plenty of us. Um, I had this revelation recently, kind of just being more involved around the mountain bike club and tour. I'm like, man, this is an incredible community. People are so encouraging. People um, want to know me. How, how good is this? So church is more than just community. And, and what I think the difference is, or one of the differences is, is that church is community plus mission. It's not just community. It's not just we get together and we encourage each other. It's actually we're on mission together. We're actually living life for a purpose that's just greater than ourselves, a purpose that's greater than just building our own sporting club, right, or building our own Christian club. That's not what church is about. Church is about being together, encouraging, being united, and actually being together as we go and live lives on purpose, as we live within the broader community, living on mission. So it's a place of unity. We're headed in the same 
direction. And, and I hope that the reason you're part of this community is, is not just for convenience. I, I think we should never choose a church based on convenience. You should never be like, you know, I come here because I live two minutes away. I don't really like it, but it's close. It's convenient. I, I think we really should be a part of a faith community because of calling. Because we feel like God is actually calling us to be a part of it. That we actually come and we say, I want to be united in the mission and the vision that this community has. I, I'll actually, I want to actually be a part of something greater than myself. And I want to bring my gift and my talent and my time and my finance to be united in mission with what this group of people are doing. Because church isn't just community. It's community plus mission. It's, we're on mission together. Is anyone excited about living on mission? I, lo- I think it's so important. I think without mission, church becomes um, consumeristic. Church becomes, uh, what can I get out of it? And I think if you're ever asking yourself that, when, when it comes to the question, why go to church? If the question is, what do I get out of it? You've, you've kind of missed the point. The point of church is not come and receive, which, which it is. It happens. Like I said, I've received so much. But, but what church is actually is come and give. Come and partner Come and live on purpose. Come and live a life that's bigger than yourself. That's what church is about, reminding myself weekly that this is not just about me. This is about making a difference in my community. This is about making a difference in my family. This is about making a difference in my city. This is about being a part of changing the world. And I don't know if you vibe with that, but I vibe hard with changing the world. I don't want to live an insignificant life. I want to live a big life for Jesus that leaves this world a better place than when I was born. I want to leave a legacy that goes beyond just Levi was a great dude. But man, because Levi was intentional with me, I encountered Jesus and he transformed my life. That's the kind of life that I want to live. And I don't know if you vibe with that, but I hope you do. And and maybe you don't. Would you, would you think about it? Think about how you can actually be a part of not just the community, but a part of mission. How you can be a part of living a life that's greater than yourself. It's how can I unite with the mission of this community? And I mean, I think our mission is pretty plain and should be the mission of everywhere, I think. In Matthew 28, 19, it says, Therefore go and make disciples. Or, Therefore go to all people and show them what it means to follow Jesus, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I think it's like our mission is go and help people realize that there is a God who loves them, there is a God that's with them, and that they are no longer victims to life, but they can actually live victorious through Jesus. That's what our mission is. Because when you think about it, we, we get to heaven, and we'll do everything a lot better right? Sam worship led incredibly tonight. Let's thank Sam and Vanessa and the whole team. Um, but, but worship's going to be better in heaven. Uh, we can do all that stuff, but the only thing that, and I'm convinced the only reason we're, not, we're, we're still here is because there's people who don't know about Jesus. There's people that don't know about purpose. There's people that don't know about having a vision for their life. There's people that don't realize that they're accepted and loved unconditionally despite their biggest flaws. And our job now is to go out and tell those people that there is good news. That's what gospel means, good news. If you ever hear someone sharing the gospel and it doesn't sound like good news, they're sharing it wrong, okay? Because the gospel is good news. It's good news that, that, that you're actually called to a purpose bigger than yourself. So that's what mission is. It's living a life bigger than yourself. It's fulfilling your calling. Um, it's Jesus working through our community and into our community. And, and I'll just encourage us, just on a real practical level, this is something I was challenged about um, last year. I realized that everyone I knew was a Christian. Um, and for some people, they'd say, praise the Lord. And I was like, actually, no, I'm not living on mission. If everyone I know is a Christian, I need to meet some new people because I'm not called to hang out with Christians, which I'm going to do because I love you guys, okay? This is not just like ragging on anyone who's a Christian. But, but I've got to live a life that's bigger than that. And I think sometimes we can underrate meeting new people. Um, so I want to encourage you, maybe that's a practical thing to do this week, if, when, is to ask yourself, when was the last time I met someone new? And then maybe ask yourself, what could I do to meet somebody new? 
And maybe it's simple as joining a sporting club, going along to something new. Maybe it's just talking to the barista at your cafe for more than just, you know, a couple of seconds as you order your coffee. Because I'm convinced we're called to live on mission. I did this last week, actually. I was a part of a, um, a mountain, first, I did my first ever mountain bike race. And it was unfortunately on a Sunday morning. And so I took kind of, obviously, Sunday, technically a work day for me. So I took annual leave. I took some time off. Um, And and as I was driving there, I just really felt like the Holy Spirit was saying to me, this isn't a day off. This isn't a day off. You're actually on mission. And I realized the reason I'm doing this is not because I want to get away from church. It's because I want to meet new people. I want to make some new connections. I want to be a light in the world. I don't want to just be living my own little way. I want to be living on mission. So... Why come to church? I mean, this is not an exhaustive list, okay? So if you're trying to weigh up why, don't, this is, there's more, okay? Uh, but this is just my thoughts tonight. Uh, why go to church? I mean, because church is a community. Community is essential for growth. Church just isn't just community, though. It's community and mission. And probably my favorite part of church, just as I'm, I'm wrapping up, is that I can actually be a part of what God's doing. When, when I'm involved in a community like church, I can actually be a part of what God's doing. And what that means is a win for church is a win for me. When someone finds breakthrough in church, I'm actually a part of that because I'm a part of the church. And when God does something in the church, it means that he can do it in your life as well. When you see someone get blessed, man, I'd be expecting that God can bless you as well because if he's doing it in the church, it means he's doing it in people. If you hear a testimony of someone being healed or set free from addiction like we saw Sam, come on, believe that you can receive it yourself because when God does it in the church, he's not talking about doing it in a building. He's talking about doing it in people. It means that it is available for you to receive. A win for church is a win for me. And and just never underestimate the power of showing up. Hey, of just being here week in and week out. I think sometimes it's like, no one will miss me. Man, we miss you. Because what happens with church, the power of church is we come together and I bring my faith and Jordy brings his faith and Moses brings his faith. And what we have is a community of people joining for the same cause of lifting up the name of Jesus. And it's powerful when we just show up, when we just we're just here and we just determine, I'm ready to meet someone new. And I'd encourage you, that's probably how you can be a part of church in a really practical way, is if you see someone new, if you're new here tonight, by the way, welcome. It's so great to have you. Why don't we give it up for anyone who's here for the first time? It's great to have you with us. Um, really hope that you experience family this evening, that you experience what it means to be a part of a community on mission. Uh, but a really practical way is if you see someone new, say hello. Um, let your experience be their experience. Welcome them, encourage them, um, introduce them to a few people. Because I think that, I really think that God's doing something new, hey? There's just a whole bunch of stories from church at the moment of people kind of just showing up out of the blue and saying, I, I want to know what it means to follow Jesus. And interestingly, it kind of like, uh, this is going to sound like a little bit like a conspiracy theorist. It's not. Um, but we had like Pentecost Sunday, which is celebrating people getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And kind of this is what happens just before this story. These people are waiting for a new experience of God. The Holy Spirit comes, fills them with, with, um, with power. And they're speaking in all these different languages and they're fired up. And people are like, something's going on. And it says in that day alone, 3,000 new people were added to their group. And then it goes on. And this, this is where we pick it up. This, we picked up the story before where daily new people were joining what God was doing. And, and just ever since Pentecost Sunday, we've just seen people showing up out of the blue and just saying, I want to know what it means to follow Jesus. And I think that is super exciting. And, and I mean, part of it's on us. We've got to be inviting people. Hey, we can't just be like, well, God, make them come. No, no. Our job is to go out and meet people and bring them. But it's like, God's just so hungry, man. He's bringing and people himself. He's showing up and he, people are coming like, I, like, I want to know about Jesus. I feel like he wants me to be here this evening. And, and so I think let's just be really excited about what God's doing and be prepared to partner with that. It's an influx of people saying, I want to get back to following Jesus. And I'm so excited about that. And if that was you recently that made your deci- that decision, I just want to encourage you, like, pivotal moment in your life, hey. And I would say my life is where it's at now. Because a whole bunch of crossroad decisions where I had the opportunity or, or T forks in the road, maybe, where, where I had 
the opportunity to maybe go my own way. And I decided, no, you know what? I want to follow Jesus. Even though maybe the other way looks appealing and might look like it's rewarding for me now. And, and I think for me, if, if I'm honest, I'm living my dream life. Hey, I, I'm really living a life I never expected that I could live on my own. From the incredible uh, incredible Talitha that I'm married to and our two kids. And just I just feel like, man, I'm so blessed to live the life that I'm living. And I'm convinced it's because I just kept showing up. And I just kept deciding, I'm going to follow you, Jesus, even when it's a T intersection. So I just feel like some people here recently have made a decision to follow Jesus. You've just made a really good decision. Continue on it. Be encouraged. God is leading you into more than you could ever have imagined. That's my story. And, uh, you know, so many, I guess, opportunities to go my own way. And that'd be the same story for so many people here tonight. So um, why go to church? Hey, well, first of all, let's live lives that's that's that are bigger than ourselves. And let's recognize that church is not just a place to go to, but it's actually a community to belong to. It's a community to be a part of. And it's not just about belonging. It's actually about helping other people experience what we've experienced. Hey, can you stand? I'd love to pray for us. Um, And just share, I've got a couple of questions here that hopefully help you apply this. The first one is just, what area of your life are you growing in? Can Can you identify an area of your life that you're intentionally growing in. And this is what I love about Life Group because we talk about this every week. What's God saying to you? What are you doing about it? It's about committing to the process of growth. Um, The second question, are you coming for mission or for convenience? Um, Or maybe for tradition because this is where I've come in the past, so this is where I'm going to keep coming. I'd encourage you, would you let God speak to you and really move your heart to be a part of this church, if it is this church you're going to be a part of, because you want to be on mission, not just because it's convenient, not just because it's close, but actually because you feel like you're called to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And last question is, are are you ready to grow? I hope you're ready to grow. I hope you're ready to grow personally, and I hope you're ready to grow corporately. Um, I hope you're ready for a whole bunch of new faces to start showing up. I hope you're ready to lose your favorite seat because there's somebody new sitting in it, okay? And when that happens, we've got to be bigger than that and celebrate together that God is doing something, the church is growing, new people are coming, new people are having their lives changed. So I hope, I hope you're ready to grow personally, and corporately. I hope you're ready to say hello to someone new when they come in. And, and maybe you're an introvert. That's okay. Live on the edge of your personality, okay? Maybe you're introverted, but you, you can get away with a hello to someone as they walk past. So um, let's be excited and let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for the incredible community of, of purpose, I suppose, that church is. And I just pray that tonight you'd really give us a real a, a refreshing a refresh, a refresh of, of why we're a part of this. And I just pray that you'd just really help us to get on board with what you're doing, that this wouldn't be something that's what's in it for me, but it'd rather it'd be, God, how can I be a part of what you're doing? How can I join with what you're doing? And Jesus, I just pray, I pray in Jesus' name, I, I, I just speak out that this place would be full of new people coming to know you, having their lives transformed by you, because we know that you, the life with you is the best life. It's a life of purpose, of hope, of mission. And we just pray that this place would be full of new people. I pray you'd help us to be ready to receive it, to welcome people. I pray as people come that, that they would find family, a place of belonging, and a place of purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, and why don't you keep your eyes closed for one more moment. And just maybe you're here tonight and you've never made that decision for yourself to go on a journey of following Jesus. Um, if that's your, oh, I'd love to just encourage you and pray with you. And just while everyone's eyes are closed, if, if that's you, would you just put your hand up? And you're saying, yeah, that's me. I want to know what it means to follow Jesus. I want to start following Jesus. Um, or maybe I want to come back to following Jesus. If that's you, would you just raise your hand up so I can see it? Yeah, see that hand over here. That's awesome. So good. I'm not going to just labor this too long. But anyone else here, you're just saying, that's me. I want to know what it means to follow Jesus. Or I want to start following Jesus. I want to re-follow Jesus. Awesome. Well, Jesus, we just thank you for our our friends responding to you this evening. We thank you that you care for them so greatly. And I pray right now, Jesus, that you would make yourself real in their hearts, God, that they would have a sense of your presence right now, that they would know that you are with them and that they are not alone. Fill them with a fresh hope and vision for their future. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, why don't we encourage those people? That's what it's all about. 
It's awesome. So good. Hey, if that was you, Pastor Matt is going to come and tell you what you can do.